Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are just finishing up the fertilizer spreading in this field. So I'm just going to double check on here how much we've got. We've got a little bit there that we need to tidy up and then there's a couple little bits sort of around the edges here. Um, which I would kind of expect, I suppose, can, all things considered... Um, we didn't do once right round the edge of the field, so now we're paying the price for our laziness. I mean, it's not too bad. We've got that bit over there, and then I can run down here and get this bit, which is not actually very much left at all on there. I've got a little bit sort of over here that I want to get. I'll bring that in around like that and then slow down a little bit and bring you in round again like this. And I've got a little... So there's, there's some bits just here and then there's a strip that runs up the side of the field over this side. And then there's a bit by the road sign that we want to go and get as well. And that's most of it. There isn't a lot else. We probably would have been better off if we had actually gone all the way around the edge of the field and done it like that, done it properly. But we didn't, and... Oh, and I don't think it's too bad. There's a little bit there that we didn't quite... We weren't able to quite get. And then there's another little bit over here, but this is much more insignificant over here. Uh, just here on this corner. So if I whiz around like that... And then the last little bit is over in front of the stone, over there. But I, I went past the stone. It was just a little bit further out than that. Um, so that bit, we didn't really have much choice in the matter. So I'll bring you down over here. Is that going to be enough, do you think? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. What do we got? How did that miss it? How on earth did that miss it? it well, I was, I was on the wrong side of the stone, I think. It's, it's, it's over this way a bit more. Got to be over here somewhere. Not quite sure where. Unless... Oh, no, 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 no. Look. Yeah, it's still missing. It's it's because we didn't do it the first time around. When we first went and did fertilizer in the field, we didn't do it. So anyway, the, the, the fertilizer spreading is now all finished. We've got more tidying and cleaning that we want to do around the yard and we got a whole load of machinery and stuff that we want to put away so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come up here i'm going to stop the tractor right there uh well i'm just going to pause the tractor i'm actually shutting the thing off i'm not even going to bother doing that i'm going to bring this one up here and we're going to quickly clean off that front weight then we'll clean off the actual tractor because it is absolutely lagged in filth. Um, as soon as I have done this and I've washed off the fertilizer spinner as well, we'll run this one round and we'll take off the dual wheels and then we can start using this tractor to put things away. I also want to tidy up the sheep and the chickens and put things away there. I was going to look at buying another bucket for our front loader, for our tractor. But I don't think I'll bother with that, because I'm quite happy sort of doing it with the trailer. We'll bring the trailer up, and we can then just scoop up the stuff and put it into the trailer. That would be our, one of our morning jobs that we have to do with looking out. And we have got 170 cows. So there is going, you know, when you have a load of animals, there are tasks that you need to complete on a daily basis, or... At least they normally are. Um, yes, it's possible to play the game in such a way that you don't have daily tasks to do. But I don't really want... I don't think that we should be doing that. This is supposed to be a, a series sort of more about realism. And yes, I know I do use autoloaders and I continue to do so. Despite some people's absolute apparent disgust for my using autoloaders. But we've already explained that and I'm not going through it again. Um, oops. Nearly forgot. Right. Um... But other than that, I'm trying to do this as realistically as possible. So we want to customize in here. I'll take the twin wheels off. We don't want narrows. We don't want weights. We will use standard wide tires. Is what we're going to use in here. Start you back up again. And I didn't actually want it to unhitch everything. It just sort of does that. 
Um, so we need to put these things away in the shed. Now, if we're able to do this right, we should, in theory, not really need to use that sprayer anymore. That sprayer will become a thing of the past. That's only if we can continue to keep using the weeders. But, and that's going to require a bit of uh, good luck. Right, we are going to require luck to be able to do that properly. Um, next, we'll go and get the baler and we'll put that one away. And then we will get the plow and put that one away. And the cultivator and put that one away. And then we will get the tractor and we'll do some more work with the animals. Because... Uh, is there anything else that we need to buy, first and foremost? I don't think there is. I've bought everything I need to buy. I was thinking about getting another bucket, but I don't really need to do that. Not if we're going to use the trailer the way that I did uh, last time. Um, so I don't believe there is anything else that we need to buy. We've got the trailer for carrying the grain to the pigs. That one, we're also we're using it for the cows as well for doing the mixed feed. So we, we've got that. That is that is there, and it's it's being used, and we don't need to worry about it. Uh, let's put that round baler back in the shed back there. Um, so yeah, that that one's that one's there. We we've got it. We we don't need to worry about it. Um, we we've got everything that I need. I don't think that there is anything else that I need to buy. So. As there isn't anything else that I really need to buy, what we can do is we can spend all of the money that we've got on buying some pigs. Now, if I'm going to go and buy a load... Oh, actually, I've got to go around the other side of this one. Um, if I'm going to go and buy a load of pigs, then I'm going to need to make sure that we have we can start putting some food and some water in for them as well. Let's bring you up this way shall we there we go we want to do it like that right let's pick you up and i'm going to fold you like that and i will bring this one over here like that go up to there repair that one yes done right now run and we'll put this one away in the shed then we will do the plow the plow doesn't go in the shed the plow goes under those trees over there a bit more out of the way this one here does go in the shed, though. And then we've got the mowers that we want to put away in the shed. So this one goes in here. The seed drill goes in the next bay over. Let's put you about there. Set you down. And then the mowers go the other side of the two seed drills. And... That will be everything carefully put away and all done. So I've just got to, I just got to wash that seed drill off. The other tractor could do it being hosed down a little bit as well. That probably wouldn't hurt. And I've also what I haven't done is uh, I I could do with putting a little bit more straw in for the cows. I think I haven't put straw in for the cows today. Um, I don't know how much straw we need to put in for them. Go and do this one a second there. We'll repair you. You need you needed a lot of repair work there, but it's looking a lot better now. We've renewed the um, the pegs that, that or re re we've renewed the tips on the plow. That's what needed doing. So we needed to renew the tips on the plow. So I'll lower you down there and just unhitch that one like that. I will get the seed drill on next, and we'll do that one. And then we'll do the mowers at the end. We'll do those last. So let's bring you back on here and put that one on. Just like that. Bring you up here. I've got a reasonable amount of wool there starting to accumulate. I don't know how much we've got in here. We got 5,000, 2,000. That one's full. That one's 400. That one's full. That one's 3,000. Uh, I got the equivalent of three full pallets of wool right now. Uh, wool is 917. That's got to be above 1,000 in order for us to consider selling. So, no, we don't want to be selling the wool at the moment. So, let's grab use the last item that we want to be hosing down now. Um, now, this one, 
I've had some people giving some discussion about this one because I said that this wasn't suitable for going after plowing. It's a direct drill. And I've said that I don't think it's suitable for drilling after plowing. I think that you have to go over and do some other cultivation work before you can use this one to um, actually go through and do your... Um, do your plowing, uh, to do your planting, sorry. Um, now, if we take a look at this one, it is, uh, like, uh, I think personally that uh, we're both right in this particular instance. Um, we've got, on this one right here, we've got the wheels that are pressing down a little bit. They're creating a bit of weight, so they're helping to break down the clods. Then we've got a set of discs, which help to break things up, and then we got some tillers right there those are vibrating tillers that uh, they'll go along the ground and they vibrate through the ground which helps to shatter the clods and then these discs here they're not so much for breaking stuff up there for creating the little run where the seed is then dropped and then these wheels behind they act as a press and they press down the soil afterwards and then you go along with the roller um so for lighter soils this would be fine. You could plow and then you could go and use this one and it would be absolutely fine. For heavier clay soils, I would argue that this would not be sufficient. You wouldn't break up the clods enough. And even though you're rolling them afterwards, you've still got these clods that would dry out. And it would be basically like a layer of stone across the top of the field, which is going to stunt the growth of the crops that you're planting underneath. It is going to end up causing some problems. So... For the right soil types, yes, you could use this one directly after plowing. Um, if you've got heavier soil, and I am sort of basing it on the soil that is based around the area that I live. Um, a lot of the soils around here, you would struggle to use just this one immediately after plowing. You would want to do a bit of cultivating first before you went and took this one now if you're going straight into the field it it tends to sort of it behaves a little bit differently if you go straight into the field without doing any cultivating first because you what where the problem is is not getting the seed down into the ground the problem is the big clods of soil that are left afterwards and it's those clumps the the clods of soil that if they're not broken down properly they basically they dry out very quickly in the summer and it's like stone you've got a layer of stones across the field and it makes it more difficult for the young plants to grow um it, it sort of it it impacts the growth of the young plants so if you've got quite heavy soil then when you plow you're left with a whole load of these clods afterwards whereas if you've got lighter soil yes you're still left with the clods but that would be sufficient to break them down so my argument is that on this particular occasion, we're both right. Yes, you could use that one directly after plowing if you've got lighter soil, but if you don't have the lighter soils, then you do need to wait and you do need to, um, uh, you not, no, you, it's not, you need to wait. Uh, you, you do need to cultivate before you'd be able to go and use that one in the field. At least that's, um, my argument for it. Now, by all means, Come back to me with the counter argument again this week. It'll be interesting to see what people have to say about that. But thus, in my experience, um, thus what's happened. I've used um, a direct drill before now. I've, I've drilled many hundreds of acres in quite heavy clay soil with a direct drill. And I've used the exact same drill for working behind um, a plow. And we had to go over it with the cultivator sometimes we had to go over it with the cultivator two or three times in order to break the soil down to a sufficient standard to be able to um plant effectively um and that was going in with a direct drill the drill was designed for going into the field without needing to um do any plowing whatsoever um but after plowing we needed to we had to cultivate we had no choice um, it just would not have broken anything down enough in order to be able to um, get the plants growing and get them well established. So we had to do quite a lot of cultivating work. And all of the soil in the area that I was working in was a heavy clay soil. So 
that's what I've been basing it on when, I, when I've been saying that. But I uh, have to sort of read in the comments um, and how the person who obviously knew what they were talking about is one comment in particular I was reading that they gave quite a detailed explanation as to why that one would actually be acceptable. And there were a couple of other comments on it as well, um, sort of in reply. And... Yes, you have a very fair point. That would be sufficient to break it down. It does have enough on there. And as you pointed out, the roller going along afterwards, because it would be normal and it's not. In, it doesn't actually happen in this game. But normally in real life, you do go and roll the field afterwards. You don't use a flat roller. You use a Cambridge uh, ring roller, um, which uh, is basically rolls it all with ridges. And that um, allows the young plants to have a little bit of shelter when they come up um but it still squashes everything down flat and that right the act of using the roller does also squash everything down as well and it breaks up uh, it further breaks up more of the clumps that are there um so this is all good things this, this is all good points about it right we're going to stop you there. i'm just going to leave you kicking around in the yard for a minute and we're going to move on to the next one uh, not that one this one um is very good points um very very good points have been made but having i'm i'm still saying that that what yes that th those are valid points but only when you've got lighter soils if you have got the heavier soils you're not going to be able to do it and i speak from personal experience on that um with the roller coming along afterwards it still wasn't sufficient to um, make that seed bed uh, appropriate for is that actually tipping out properly yes it is All right it still wasn't suitable for making it, it that the, the seed bed wasn't enough you, you weren't able to get enough on the seed bed um, it, it broken down enough to be able to make a suitable seed bed for the animals and that was that was the issue right we had to go and cultivate and I know this. I absolutely know this because I was the poor schmuck on the uh, cultivator. And uh, one, there was a couple of fields in particular. I'd gone over and cultivated them. And then I was summoned back. And I'd actually driven quite a long way. Like um, some parts of the estate were miles and miles away from other parts of the estate. And I had thought I'd finished the field. I'd gone over and cultivated. I had little experience with arable. Um, and I'd cultivated the field, I'd gone over it, and then I uh, folded up and I drove for the half an hour down some beaten old tracks and so on and emerged out the other side of the estate so I could start working on the field there and got the cultivator unfolded, did once around the field and I got a call over the radio, you need to come back, this field is not cultivated properly. Um, we can't plant in this it's just not enough uh, so then i had to fold up and go back again and i you know the manager was there and he wasn't overly pleased with me and um i said well i'd, I'd done it I'd, I'd gone round i'd you know it, it it had been done and so then he explained that well actually no we're, we're looking for this kind of level of tilth on the ground and it wasn't enough so that's um, I didn't actually realize like how important that was at the time. I mean, I sort of knew that you had to break down the soil, but it wasn't some. I didn't quite comprehend just how much of a difference it made to the overall yield of the crop to get that right. Um, so yeah, I had to come back. And after that, uh, um, I I after that I I knew what I was doing. So yes, I still had to do some fields more than once, and that was a regular occurrence. But I didn't have to get summoned back, at least. I, I, I at least managed to um, do it off of my own judgment after that, which is, you know, the, at least I was learning. Um, and so, yeah, I ended up doing... How much, how, how much water have we got in here for the cows? Uh, we're, we're not too bad. We're not too bad for straw, either. We could do with putting some in, but I guess that can wait for another day, actually. We can leave that one more day. Um, but yeah, I, so I had, to, I had to go all the way back and it wasted a bit of time because people were stood around waiting. They couldn't do it while I was, 
it was the last field. They didn't realize that I'd not done it properly. So then they had to wait for me to come back so I could go over the field again with the cultivator. And it put everything behind. Um, long story short. Now, what are we going to go with? Uh, we've got the black and whites, which is Gloucester Old Spot. Well, sort of like a Gloucester Old Spot. Um, we've got the the whites with the, a few. Well, actually, I think that's more like a Gloucester Old Spot, isn't it? I think so. You know, I'm not sure about the two. That is your traditional large pig right there. Um, most pigs now look like that. I prefer these. Now, this is slightly different to the large black. This is the large white. Um, and this here is the large black. Although it's not quite a large black because of the pinks now and the um, pale trotters. The large black, the one that I had at least, was completely black. Um, I really like that pig. It wasn't as big as a white one. And also, it should be noted that once the animals are killed, the crackling and, and so on that you get off of it, it's not black at all. Um, it does go white. And I'm not quite, I think that might have to do with the scalding and the removing of the hairs. It bleaches out the black pigment from the skin. Um, anyway, I really like my large black sow. She was, she was really friendly. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to go with large blacks for our pig farm here. So we're going to buy as many as we've got money for. That's what we're going to start off with. We want 300 pigs in total. Uh, we're up to 64,000 at the moment. 76, 78, $80,000 exactly for 50 pigs. That is the first purchase of livestock. For our pig pens, there we go. The pig pens, that means we need to get straw in for these little porkers as fast as we possibly can. So that they are comfortable at all times. We want to get more water in for them. So there is the pig enclosure right there. We've got water going in for them immediately. And then we need to get corn, wheat, soybeans, potatoes. Actually, I did say that we weren't going to be doing the potatoes and sugar beet. That was the one bit that I said that we wouldn't be putting in for them. And I intend to leave it like that. So we will provide straw for the animals. We've got water for the animals. I'm going to need to go and get that one and load it up. So I've got my front loader over here. So what we're going to do... We'll do straw second, actually. We won't do straw to start with. We will... So in which case, what I'll do is I'm just going to leave this tractor right here for a second. And we're going to go to the other tractor. You know what? We'll, we'll use... I was going to use the um, the other Deutz, but I'd rather use this one. Uh, we're going to use this tractor. We're going to load up. We're going to put corn in first. So we will load up a trailer load of corn and we will put in all of the corn that we can. Now, obviously, it would be faster if I was to take three trailers and put them in a... Long line like I did in the time lapse series. Um, the Black Mountain series. We just had a line of trailers and we kept running them through like that. I don't actually want to do that though. I don't actually want to do that at all. Um, what happened to the trailer we had there? Pretty sure I updated that pack. I don't recall selling or getting rid of that trailer in any way. That one was supposed to stay there to be, you know, selling for the merchant. 45,000 litres at a time. Wasn't it? It, ju it? it just parked up there, but it's now gone. I wonder if that's got anything to do with me updating the pack. That, that pack needed an update. And I did the update. And now that trailer said... I didn't get rid of it, did I? I haven't, like, gotten rid of it and then just completely forgotten that I decided to remove that trailer. I'm sure I haven't. I... No. I, have, I haven't done that. It, it, it has just gone. We, we, we've lost... That trailer has just vanished. I updated the pack and now the entire thing has disappeared. How very peculiar. Right, anyway, it doesn't really matter. We want to very quickly get some food in here for the pigs. or these poor things are going to be getting a wee bit hungry. Let's have a look in here. Cleanliness is 100%. Uh, productivity at the moment is 0%. Their productivity is 99%. I don't know why it's 99. These are 99 as well. It's probably to do with the cleanliness, actually. 
unless it's to do with some other things. Oh my goodness me. 32,000 litres of corn I've just put in there and we've only got 50 pigs. <laughs> I got another 108,000 litres of corn. Right, we've only got 50. Times that by six, we need 108,000 litres of corn. That's just the corn. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that we are going to struggle to feed our pigs. We've got a straw crop coming in. But then after that, we are going to struggle big time. So we're going to... Let's go with canola to start with. If we find out that we don't need all of the canola all of the time, then maybe we could do something different. But I'm starting to think that what we're actually going to need to do is have um, a slight change of plan. We're going to need to turn the grass field into an arable field, get a bigger combine, and get a lot more corn being grown. I don't think we're going to be able to do this otherwise. I mean, we might, because we can still do every other crop. We're not allowed to do two crops the same. We cannot do two crops the same in succession other than the grass field. Um, so we may be all right with the corn. You've got to remember that this is six days worth. I mean, I do have to fill the pen right up. So we're going to need at least 80,000 litres worth. Uh, hundred At least 180,000, I think. No, we're not going to need that much. Yeah, we are. Um, because we're going to, like, all of the, it's me. Okay, canola. That's, oh my goodness me. Good gravy. Does that go in the set? That's gone in the set. I didn't realise that they had, they took the same kind of quantities. Apparently they do take the same quantities. I'm going to get a little bit more canola in here a minute and then we're going to see just how much 50 pigs takes because we got to times that by 6. In order to get all of our numbers, we got to times that by 6, which means that we're going to have to times everything by 6 by the look of it because it doesn't scale back with the other crops. So 12,000 litres of canola left and that is everything there for the canola. Um, we definitely don't have enough of that to go in. So canola is, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that the grass field is going to be going by the wayside and we're going to be putting more crops going. But if we do that, I mean, we've got the drill for it. We should be all right for the drilling. It's the combine. The combine's quite small. We're going to need to buy a bigger combine and then buy, you know, the headers and everything for it. That's going to be a good $150,000, I would think. That's all of the canola gone in. Which have I got here? 44,500. I think that is completely full. We will go and get some... We'll, we'll go and do a, a load of wheat now. Bring all of the wheat over. I got barley growing in the field, so we, we've got plenty of that. Uh, but 44,500. If we said 45,000, and then we've got to have exactly times six in order to make the numbers up to what we're going to need for the pigs. This has actually come as quite a surprise to me. I did not expect us to need this much in the way of grain for these animals. I really, really didn't. I did not think that we'd be needing these kind of quantities. I thought that the 180,000 litres of corn was going to be close to be pretty good for running the pigs. But apparently it's not even a little bit close. We are a long way off of what we're going to need. So I've got all of this wheat here that I'm weighed down with. I'll do another full trailer load because... Not only am I going to dump some in for the pigs, but then I'm going to need to dump some in for the chickens as well. So we can fill that one right up. Um, I'll bring you in around. But when the pigs, uh, when the food comes out, it doesn't come out as wheat here. It comes out as pig food. So when you tip that back in again, 
uh, that does actually give them a small quantity of, um, not sorry, the potato sugar beet. It does actually put a small quantity in there. So we're already eating up a little bit of the food in here, but this is, this is what we're looking at. And we're already with 50 pigs. We're getting a pig every six hours. Once we've increased the number of pigs in here um, times three or four, the pig count is going to be increasing quite rapidly. The only thing that we need to do is make sure that we can fill the pen completely with the required grain. And that is going to be our challenge. That is going to be the difficulty. Because, I mean, that's, that's the whole point of this entire series, is that we have to fill the pens right up to the very brim. So I'm going to load this trailer all the way up again. And we'll take that one over. Should go to 44,500 litres of grain in the pig pen. But that does mean that every time we add another 50 pigs into... that, That's all of the grain now. Every time we add another... 50 pigs in I've got to I've got to throw in another 40 well close to 50,000 liters of each type of grain for every new 50 pigs that goes in there and I don't know that we've got that now they will I think they consume it at slower rates at least I'm hoping they do I mean I, I don't know I'm, I'm hoping the consumption rates of the various grains will make a little bit of a difference so that's oh, that's gonna go in there is that gonna stop yes right thank goodness for that right okay 45,000 exactly so we got 45,000 in there for that one 45,000 for that one and 45,000 for that one now normally ah maximum capacity of feeding trough suffice to feed the animals for 10 days there I thought it was six days so we've got 10 days worth of wheat in there. So it's, it, we still need a very large quantity to fill them up. But it's got... Oh, wait a minute. I need to do the... No, actually, I'll go around this way to feed the chickens. We'll, we'll go around and then we'll bring them back up through so that uh, I'm on the correct side for feeding the chickens. Um, yeah, the... We've got the... Um... We got 10 days worth of this. We'll see when we do the corn as to whether that is 10 days worth that has gone in there or whether when we do the corn, it's actually more like it's the six days. Like if I go here to the chickens and I tip in for them, let's see how much goes in here. I end up putting the whole lot of all the rest of the grains going to go in this. Nope, nope, that's it right there. Uh, no, that's 10 days as well. Okay, so they they require this amount every 10 days. Takes a couple days to grow a crop. We're going to struggle with this. We're going to... Well, I think we're going to struggle with it if we just stick with this field. So I'm kind of thinking that the grass field, we do one more crop of grass. But then what we might end up doing is uh, replanting that field with something else. Which means that we're going to need to sell that combine and the header or headers. And we're going to need to buy something bigger so that we've got a chance of being able to get round our fields in a reasonable amount of time. That does mean, though, that we are going to have no more grass coming in to feed our animals, which is going to be a little bit detrimental to us. So we need to be able to feed our animals. We've got 10,000 litres of wheat plus 3,000 litres of barley left. Canola is all gone. Soybeans, we got 30,000. Um, corn, we've got 10,000, uh, 100,000 litres of corn. So we've got plenty of corn in here. But corn, you got 50% requirement for corn on the pigs. I'm wondering if we should have, like, not filled it up with all of the crops. I don't know. We'll see. I thought that they used corn faster than they did the other crops. That's what I thought. I know they do in seasons. You use corn twice as fast as you do the others. So why it's not being used twice as fast on here, I don't know. Unless it is, and we're about to put 
a really, truly obscene amount. I know that my, my episode's actually gone on a little bit longer than it should have uh, um, today, but I, I really just want to find out what's going to happen with this corn. Um, are we putting a really, truly obscene amount of corn in here, or is it... Okay, it does stop. It does actually stop, and that stops at 45,000 litres as well. So we've got 45,000 litres in there. Let out and close back down again, and 10 days. So all we can do now is wait to find out and see if they use them up at exactly the same rate or if we use them up, you know, a little bit faster than that. Now, let's say productivity 85%. Um, it's five, 50, 25, and 20. That should go up to 95%. Um, I think that they don't require straw for the pigs to be happy. We get slurry from them, but I'm not 100% sure about that. We get slurry and manure from the cows because we're putting straw in for them. But they're very happy. The, the cows are very happy. They're staying at 99%. The sheep are happy as well. We've got 20 sheep to go. We've got 25 cows to go. And we got 250 pigs to go, and this is the kind of level that we've got in here. Right, wait, 976 and 976. Maybe. Let's fast forward a little bit and just watch what happens with the pigs. 5'3", to 6'4", to 6'2". Two nine five three four five three. Okay. They are using them at the, right, they're definitely using them at different rates. That's good. That is good. They're using them at different rates. So it's not the end of the world. Corn, they are going to require so the corn is the one that is ten days worth. The others do fill to the same quantity, but they use a lot less. So we may not need to go for the bigger fields. Uh, a bigger combine probably wouldn't hurt, but we'll wait and see on that one. We may end up going for a bigger field eventually anyway, just so that we've got the extra bits of grain in there. Because let's be honest, I'm going to need 180,000 litres of all of them, and I don't have the required crops in here at the moment. So it might um, sort of benefit us to plough up some of that grass and turn that into arable crops as well. well we'll wait and see but anyway i have run out of time so if you enjoyed this episode then please hit down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar goodbye and see you later <laughs>